What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to solve problem 2.36 of Griffith's 4th edition. So this is a continuation of our previous uh, video. Okay, so let me re read the problem again. Consider two concentric spherical shells of radii A and B. Suppose that the inner one carries a charge Q and the outer one carries a charge negative Q. Both of them are uniformly distributed over the surface. Calculate the energy of this configuration. Okay, we already did equation number 2.45, so that's letter A in the previous problem or previous video. And this time, we're going to use equation 2.47 and the results of example 2.9. Okay, so... Uh, for example, two point uh, equation two point two point forty seven equation two point forty seven is given by the total energy is equal to the energy one. So that's the energy because remember we have two charged shell. One is positive Q and one is negative Q with radius A and B. Okay? So, W1 here, or energy 1, pertains to the work, uh, or the energy stored in the inner shell. Then we added to the total energy stored in the outer shell, outer shell as if individually. And then, we add this term, uh, epsilon naught, times the volume integral of the dot product of the electric field and the, set, uh, the electric field of the inner dotted with the electric field of the outer. Okay. So, uh, from, from example 2.9, the energy stored in a spherical shell is given by uh, uh, 1 over 8 pi epsilon naught q squared over the radius. So in this case, uh, w, w1 would be for a and then w2 would be 1 over, a, 1 over 8 pi epsilon naught q squared over b. Okay? And then the electric field E1 and E2 are the electric field due to these charges, charge configuration, as if they are treated separately. So E1, so that's for the inner, so this is now equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R squared, R hat. So this is for R greater than A, because remember for, our, for a shell, there is no uh, electric field inside. So we're only going to consider the electric field outside the shell. E2, on the other hand, is for the second outer, or the, for the outer shell, and that is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R squared R hat for R greater than B. Okay? Okay? So if we're going to you uh, focus ourselves first in the third term, the third term becomes... Epsilon naught times the integral of the dot product between these two, because they're all both they, they they are both pointing in the same direction, so we just take the product of the two, and this will give us what? Okay, so this is this will give us q over four pi epsilon naught r squared squared. Then this is r squared sine theta the uh sorry the r d theta a d d phi d theta okay so you know that for the theta and d phi because this is a sphere this will yield 4 pi okay so let's do this so this becomes uh Sorry, this should be negative. Oh yeah, this should be negative. 
So that means this should be negative Q squared. Yeah, so ne Q times Q is Q squared and the negative, so that's negative here. So this becomes negative epsilon naught times Q over 4 pi epsilon naught squared times integral of uh, dr over r squared so this is r to the fourth this is r squared and then the evaluation will be from b to lambda to infinity okay because remember that while this is valid for r greater than a this is only valid for r greater than b okay so that means the electric field uh, for E1 will uh, uh, will only be considered for R greater than B. That's why the uh, limits of integration for R would be from B2 uh, B2 infinity. Okay? Okay. And then, this is integral of sine theta, d theta, and evaluated from 0 to pi. And then, integral of d phi 2 uh, evaluated from 0 to 2 pi okay so this is now equal to uh, again I'm not going to the details of the integration we can do it yourself by yourselves so this is now equal to negative 2 q squared over 8 pi epsilon b so this is now equal to W equals uh, 1 over 8 pi epsilon naught Q squared over A plus 1 over 8 pi epsilon naught Q squared over B minus 2 times 1 over 8 pi epsilon naught Q squared over B. Okay? So this is uh, Q squared over 8 pi epsilon naught. So this is 1 over A. And then this is 1 over B minus 2 over B. So that's 1, 1 over B. And this is now the results. As you will notice that this is the same result that we have that we obtained using equation 2.45 using a different approach okay so this demonstrates that we can calculate the energy of uh, of any configuration in so many ways and the physics would still be consistent okay so that's it uh, thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye